dear students welcome to the intermediate second years lessons explanations and uh, so far we finished uh, uh, the first prose lesson of studies explanation and uh, the second poem the table stern explanation and now uh, let us come to the third poem the builders explanation part and so in this video i will cover the explanation of half of the poem the builders and in the next video we will see the remaining half part of the poem the builders so uh, this is the third poem which you have in your syllabus so before getting into the poem the builders so it was written by henry wadsworth longfellow so now it's time for us to understand uh, something about henry wadsworth longfellow and then uh, let us come back to the poem because so it is necessary for us to uh, understand something about the poet so that uh, we can understand uh, uh, very easily about the poem also so let us know something about the poet longfellow look at the screen so that you will find uh, uh, the text which i am reading and explaining for you it is about the poet longfellow henry wadsworth a great american poet born on 27th of february 1807 in portland maine so his full name is henry wadsworth longfellow so he was a great american poet and he was born on 27th of february 1807 in portland maine portland it is uh, one of the most populous cities in uh, the usa and uh, uh, maine is one of the states from usa and so portland is the city in the state of maine he was a commanding figure in the cultural life of 19th century america so he was a commanding figure commanding figure means he was a main person in the cultural life of 19th century america cultural life or literary life of 19th century america 19th century means it is from uh, january 1st 1800 to december 31st 1900 this is called as a 19th century so he was one of the main figures in the cultural life of 19th century america next he became a national figure literary figure by the 1850s and a world famous personality by the time of his death in 1882 he became a national figure national literary figure means uh, he was a, a famous literary person one who was a great writer uh, nationally nationally means uh, in the usa in america uh, by 1850s he became a national figure but uh, uh, before his death by the time of his death in 1882 he became a world famous personality so he is well known to the world before his death so that means we can understand that uh, he became successful as a great writer uh, by the end of his life next he was a poet educator traveler a linguist and a romantic whose poetry was rooted in american life and history so this is the uh, background of the poet so he was a poet and educator educator means teacher he was a traveler one who used to travel around the countries he was a linguist linguist means one who studies languages and a romantic romantic means we have already seen Uh, in the second poem the tables turn uh, we understand that one who appreciates nature and 
one who appreciates olden days people so are called as a uh, romantic writers and so here we see uh, henry william sorry henry wadsworth longfellow also was a romantic whose poetry was rooted in american life and history so his poetry was rooted in american life and history he talked about uh, the american history how uh, the olden days people in america lived and uh, the life and history about america he used to write in his poetry he is said to be the first american poet who did not try to be just like the british poets so he was the first poet who did not imitate british poets or british writers so that means we can understand that uh, almost all the writers of america used to imitate british writers uh, i must write like that uh, poet i must write like a wordsworth i must write like milton i must write like uh, uh, this man and that man likewise uh, american writers used to imitate british writers but he is one of the first american poets who did not imitate these british poets next longfellow embraced the genre of transcendentalism so this is the next paragraph which you can see on the screen longfellow embraced the genre of transcendentalism and wrote many lyric poems known for their musicality so here we can understand that uh, longfellow used to uh, like and uh, used to write based on the genre of transcendentalism what is transcendentalism i'll give you some explanation about transcendentalism so that uh, uh, you can understand even our poem also which is uh, out of this transcendentalism what is transcendentalism transcendentalism uh, is individualism so which is not attached uh, to the people i mean that it talks about self reliance independent individualism and uh, in this transcendentalism we also see the essence of all major religions so in this transcendentalism uh, what all the major religions say so that essence final conclusion of what all the religions major religions talk in the world is discussed in this transcendentalism and this tran- transcendentalism is uh, a religious and philosophical movement so it is a religious movement as well as philosophical movement and then uh, we can understand in our own words that uh, transcendentalism is like a personality development so it talks about personality development and uh, it talks about uh, uh, individualism it talks about being independent it talks about knowing uh, inner strengths in man so this is what transcendentalism talks and uh, uh, he used to depend on this transcendentalism to write his poetry and he wrote many lyric poems known for their musicality so his poems are known for uh, musicality It, they depend on music so they give music and look at some of the um uh, poems of uh, uh henry wadsworth longfellow so the poems include paul's rivers paul rivers ride the song of hiawatha and uh, evangeline so uh, we can see all these here uh, these are the uh, poems some of the poems of uh, henry wadsworth longfellow so this is what some information about uh, the poet and now let us come back to the poem in order to understand the poem uh, in order to write annotations and questions so 
before getting into the poem let me ask you some questions and uh, it's as it is not possible to for you to answer uh, let me ask you and uh, um, and let us know the answers also who do you think are the builders of our life so who are the builders of our life but definitely the answer would be we are the builders of our own life human beings each and everybody is the builder of his own life next question if we build our own house how careful should we be if we are building our own house we would definitely be very careful because uh we think that our house must be strong enough and it has to be there for long many years and uh, we also uh, use a proper material a proper ratio of uh, the material and uh, that uh, we see to it that uh, there is a strong base and uh, uh, much cement is used for the strength of the house and uh, uh, we test the soil and uh, we use good bricks and likewise uh, we take care of uh, our house when it is being built very carefully so we will be very careful regarding the construction of our own house and so we don't see that uh, you know only the outer appearance must be good but we see even uh, each and everything clearly before building our house so uh, we see uh, about the material which we use and uh, uh, we uh, be, we will be very careful regarding the base regarding the walls regarding the windows where they have to be and everything so we will be very careful regarding uh, building our house so uh, here we in this poem understand that the poet used the comparison of building a house to building a life so comparison is used here by the poet uh between building a house and uh, building a life so the comparison so it's uh, somewhat interesting so uh, let us uh, try to understand uh, by reading this uh, poem so how um, the building of a house is related to building of our life our character look at the title the builders so who are the builders we understood that we are only the builders so uh, what what are we building so we are building our life we are building our character so we the human beings are building our own life building our destiny building our character so we are the builders and next let us come to the first stanza look at the first stanza all are architects of fate working in these walls of time these two lines are your uh, first annotation all are architects of fate fate here means destiny all are architects of fate all means here each and every person who is living on the earth is the architect of fate architect means builder so he is the builder of his fate or destiny or of his life own life working in these walls of time so he is working in the walls of time walls for a building they are compulsory and they are very important likewise time is also necessary for this building so based on time we build uh 
the building and based on time we build our destiny also so let me uh, talk about uh, the some information about time so here what the poet is saying that time is the gift of god to everyone so everybody is the architect of his fate and everybody is gifted with time everybody has the same time same 24 hours so the question is how are we using our time this is what is the question so all our architects of fate all are working in the walls of time but how are we using our valuable time the common time which is given to each and every person next come to the third uh, um line some with massive deeds and great and some with ornaments of rhyme look at these two lines here so we can understand that so some people they do the massive deeds massive means very large deeds large works and great works and some with ornaments of rhyme but there are some more people who make use of the time but they make use of the time only for uh, to show of themselves as ornament that means they don't do the very very great works but these type of people the people who are with ornaments of rhyme that means rhyme means rhyme for the poem is a, a, an ornament here just see uh, we can find here the rhyme scheme of this particular poem the poet used here uh, the rhyme scheme look at that so the last words in the last word in the first line of the first stanza fate so it has ended with the t sound and next come to the third uh, line great it has also ended with t sound and next come to the second line of the first stanza it has ended with m sound time next fourth line the last word rhyme that means here we can understand that so fate this word has the same uh rhyme with the third line uh the last word great fate great time rhyme uh likewise in the second stanza also you see low show best rest so here we can understand that so there is the rhyme scheme a b a b so a b a b so consider a fate great a time b rhyme b so here it is a b a b and uh, so in the first stanza we can uh, in this uh, stanza we can understand that uh, so all are the builders of our destiny or fate um, so we are working in the walls of time which everybody is uh, blessed with the, the 24 hours of time uh, but uh, some of them are making use of the time to do the massive deeds so very great works and uh, but some are using the time only to uh, only just passing the time and uh, uh, only uh, just doing a very small works like uh, you know behaving themselves uh, uh, like a show off so uh, like ornaments to the other people 
so this is what we can find in the first uh, stanza next come to the second stanza nothing useless is or low each thing in its place is best and what seems but idle show strengthens and supports the rest look at this uh, uh, first line nothing is useless or low nothing useless is or low so um this line has a meaning that is whatever you do uh, in your life is not useless or low so uh don't think that you are useless so some people they think that uh, uh uh their life is of waste and they are do uh, they are being useless so uh they don't do you know uh, the proper things well so they do they, they don't do the works properly and so they think that uh, they are useless but here the poet is saying that nothing is useless or low so we need to be positive so we need to be positive that uh, whatever we contribute by making use of the time by working by doing hard work so it may be a small thing or small work which you do it also counts so uh, don't think that uh, you know you are useless so we need to be positive and some more people they go to the extremes and they think that uh, whatever they are doing is useless and so uh they keep quiet they don't do uh the next works and so uh here the poet is suggesting us that uh, you know don't be quiet but do something so contribute something so do some work or the other work so this is what the poet is saying here and next each thing in its place is best so uh each thing in its place is best which means that so whatever we do and our place in the society for you it may be a small place or you are not counted in the society but so the poet is saying that each thing has its own place it is best in its own place let me give you one example if you see needle and sword sword may look bigger than needle very big but needle has its own purpose sword has its own purpose needle is used to stitch the clothes but sword is used to cut the things so uh, if we take sword and uh, uh, if you start stitching what happens so the whole cloth is cut so oh, that means what we can understand here is that each thing has its own place each thing in its place is best so uh so let us not look some people inferior so whatever they do so it is also valuable even if it is a small work it is valuable and uh you also must think that whatever you are doing even if it is a small thing or small work it is also valuable and look at the third line and what seems but idle show strengthens and supports the rest so 
what appears like idle show idle means useless so which appears like it is just a show useless show it is of no use and next uh, the poet says that strengthens and supports the rest which appears useless can also strengthen and support the rest the remaining see some people appear idle useless but they have their own use and these people will support and strengthen the remaining people so here we need to understand a, a particular uh, uh, scientific effect that is called as butterfly effect so what is this butterfly effect so uh, the air which comes from butterfly's wings when it is flying can cause a hurricane can cause a cyclone it seems so it may be wonder for us that uh, the air from this butterfly's wings can cause uh, a hurricane but uh it this effect says that even this small thing which is released out of these butterflies may uh cause the great change so we can understand that you know these small things can have the impact on the very great things so uh, we must understand that uh, uh, in the second stanza let us try to understand one important thing that is in this world nobody is useless in this world no work is useless so uh, every work is counted and each thing has its uh, place and so what appears useless can support and strengthen the remaining and so uh, needle has its own purpose sword has its own purpose and even the small works which you do out of your hard work can cause a great effect in your life and in the society so this is what the poet says in the uh, second uh, stanza next let us come to the third stanza so look at that for the structure that we raise time is with materials filled our todays and yesterdays are the blocks with w- which we build for the structure that we raise the structure structure here means the character the character that we develop so for that time is with materials filled so time is filled with materials and it is supporting that structure so what does it mean for a house materials are used different materials are used to construct a house what are those materials so materials uh, for a house are like uh, bricks sand stones cement and so on so these are the materials which are used for to build a house but for this structure that is the character so what are the materials which are used so for the character we use different uh, materials like uh, hard work and resilience perseverance commitment 
honesty integrity and values so these are all the materials which which are used for uh, building of our character building of our life so uh, in childhood uh, uh, we learn some values in our childhood so we are talking about time and in our engage we learn some more values and in our uh, middle ages we learn some values and in our old, old age we use uh, we learn some values so time is providing materials for this structure that is the character so uh, let us try to understand that uh, time is providing materials so uh, step by step and day by day for this structure for this life for this uh, uh, fate so next our todays and yesterdays are the blocks with which we build our todays and yesterdays so uh, based on our todays and yesterdays actions we build our own life so whatever you do today and whatever do you, you did yesterday are the blocks with which you build so the actions which you do today and which you did yesterday are the blocks blocks or bricks are very very important for the building so uh, here today's actions and yesterday's actions are the bricks with which we build so each day is a block and each action in a particular day is a block so if these blocks are good and if these blocks are uh, perfect so the life also will be good the construction also will be good the building will be very good very strong and so the blocks must be good and so uh, in this particular stanza we understand that uh, the materials which are used by uh, the time for this structure and the actions and thoughts whatever you uh, think today whatever you thought yesterday the actions which you do and which you did are like the blocks with which we build our own house so that means the poet says that our actions must be good our works must be good our thoughts must be good so the um, bad can cause uh, the building a damage and so uh, this is what the poet says in the third stanza and next let us go to the fourth stanza truly shape and fashion these leave no yawning gaps between truly shape and fashion these so fashion what so we need to truly shape truly truly means not falsely we need to shape and fashion these bricks or fashion uh, our building we need to truly shape not falsely and leave no yawning gaps between yawning means we know it wide opening of uh, one's mouth and uh, making a sound so yawning so it is like uh, you know having a, a gap so here the poet says that uh, we truly have to shape and fashion these so our building must be truly shaped 
and fashioned so not falsely not falsely let me give you some examples uh we see you know some buildings appear very uh tall and beautiful very tall and beautiful and some apartments they appear very beautiful constructed beautifully constructed but they uh we have also uh listened to the news we used to listen to the news that uh, you know a tall apart- apartment has fallen down because they are not truly shaped so uh, might be you know materials which they have used are not proper and strong and so there may be several reasons but we need to truly shape and fashion not falsely next leave no yawning gaps between yawning gaps we have already seen what are these gaps we must not leave gaps in a building so we need to fill all the gaps gaps between brick and brick gaps between these walls so gaps between a window and wall these have to be filled there must not be any gap so we must not leave any gap between these bricks so what are these gaps gaps here means so not doing anything being lazy is a gap and next so having a, a wrong character so following wrong morals and uh, not having honesty and uh, not doing any hard work not being uh, patient so uh, these are all the uh, characters characteristics or these are all the things which each and every person must have and so if anybody is lacking all these uh features and so it is like uh, he has gaps and so these gaps have to be filled we must not uh, what you call uh, what you call leave gaps between these bricks and walls and so on in other words the poet says that we must not have a, a poor character we must not have you know uh, a bad character so we must not have just in a building we must not have just sand so um, it will collapse likewise we must not have these gaps gaps here already i said that not doing hard work not being honest uh not being committed so uh, these are all the gaps so we must not have these gaps here and next think not because no man sees such things will remain unseen so some engineers and some builders they think that uh, you know uh, nobody sees what is there we can build just uh, a building and with a good shape so uh, with a good outer appearance and so on they think like that and uh, they build uh, but what happens is if there is the use of poor material if there is the uh, you know there are the gaps in between so what happens is the building will collapse and so don't think that uh, you know uh, no man is seeing no man is finding so uh, such things will remain unseen don't think like that don't think that uh, you know those uh, small small gaps uh, will not be seen by anyone so we must not be hypocrites we must not be the people who are acting so we must not act that nobody is observing us nobody is seeing 
so we must not be hypocrites we must be alike inside and outside so some people what they think is that so my inner character so my inner my inner thoughts are not known to the people who are with me my friends don't know my inner thoughts my inner character they know only my outer appearance so outwardly i am very good so you may say that but so here the poet is saying that uh, don't think that no man is seeing no man is able to find out your inner character so in other words the poet says that you must be same outwardly and inwardly so uh, this is what he says so in this particular stanza so we must understand that uh, we must not be falsely shaping our character so we must be truthful we must be genuine we must not leave any gaps gaps like uh, not doing hard work gaps like not being honest gaps like not being committed so uh, we must not be like that and we must not be hypocrites so outwardly appearing like uh, a very good person and inwardly a bad person so we must not be like that so uh, we must not think ever that you know nobody is observing us so this is what he says in the fourth stanza so far we have seen uh, four stanzas and uh, uh, in the first stanza we have seen that uh, you know we are all the builders of our fate and how are we using our time and uh, some people are using the time to do the very great things and some more are using the time uh, uh, only you know to spend the time uh, you know unnecessarily and uh, Uh, for uh, just like a show off and in the second stanza we see that uh, you know whatever each and every person is doing is not useless or it is low so everything has its own place so even if you do a small thing it also is counted and so uh, even the idle things also strengthens and supports the rest of the remaining of the things in the society also each and everybody is uh, very important in the society so don't think that uh, you know whatever you do uh, it is of waste and it is of a useless thing and so let me not do so don't think likewise so you must contribute something uh, to the society you must uh, uh, develop a positive attitude and in this third stanza we see that uh, time is filled with all the materials so uh, for uh, the character which we build and so uh, in those materials we have seen uh, the uh, bricks or blocks so our today's actions and yesterday's actions our today's thoughts and yesterday's thoughts are all the bricks so with which we build our character and so uh, how are we behaving today and how did we behave yesterday so everything is counted and uh, uh, those are the materials so with which we build our character and next in the fourth stanza we have seen that we need to shape our building truly not falsely and there there must not be any gaps in between so what are those gaps i already told you and next uh, uh, we must not think that nobody is observing us and so we can be uh, bad uh, uh, inside and we can be good outside and so we must not uh, behave uh, uh, like a hypocrite so this is what we have seen in these four stanzas and so uh, as i told you so the poem is uh, uh, somewhat spiritual and it is philosophical also so uh, it talks about the destiny that is fate in everybody's life and uh, um, it also talks about uh, you know the a uh, spiritual destiny also so uh, this is what we have seen uh, in this particular poem the uh, four stanzas we finished and uh, we have uh, uh, five more stanzas which have to be covered and in the next video we can uh, see them so
this is what is about the fourth stanzas thank you